Welcome to First Baptist Port Charlotte's online media. We hope this message will inspire you to draw nearer to God, connect with His family, and share your faith. Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law. He led the sheep to the far side of the wilderness to Horeb, the mountain of God. There an angel of the Lord appeared to him in flames of fire from within a bush. So Moses thought, I'll go over there and see this strange sight, why the bush does not burn up. Suddenly God called to him, Moses, Moses. He responded, here am I. And God said, do not come any closer. Take off your sandals, for the place where you are standing is holy ground. And then he said, I am the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And at this, Moses hid his face because he was afraid to look at God. The Lord said, I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I have heard them crying out because of their slave drivers. I am concerned about their suffering, so I have come down to rescue them from the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them out of that land into a land flowing with milk and honey. Now go, I am sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But, but Moses said to God, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? And God said, I will be with you. And this will be a sign that it is I who have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you will worship on this mountain. Moses said to God, well, suppose I go to the Israelites and say to them, the God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they ask me, what is his name? Then what shall I tell them? And God said to Moses, I am that I am. That is what you are to tell the Israelites. I am has sent me to you. So Moses obeyed the Lord and went to Egypt. Then the Lord said to Moses, I have made you like God to Pharaoh, and your brother Aaron will be your prophet. You are to say everything I command you. But I will harden Pharaoh's heart, and though I multiply my signs and wonders in Egypt, he will not listen to you. Then I will lay my hand on Egypt, and with mighty acts of judgment, I will deliver my people, and the Egyptians will know that I am the Lord. And so Moses and Aaron did everything just as the Lord commanded them. Moses was 80 years old, and Aaron was 83 when they spoke to Pharaoh. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, When Pharaoh says to you, Perform a miracle. Then say to Aaron, take your staff and throw it down before Pharaoh, and it will become a snake. So the day finally came. Moses and Aaron appeared before Pharaoh for the first time, and they did just as the Lord had commanded. Aaron threw down his staff in front of Pharaoh and his officials, and it became a snake. But then Pharaoh summoned his magicians and sorcerers, and they did the same thing by their secret arts. Each one threw down his staff, and it became a snake. But Aaron's snake swallowed up their snakes. Yet Pharaoh's heart was hard. He would not listen, just as the Lord had said. So they departed from his presence, and it was time for the plagues to begin. Each plague would prove Yahweh's existence, his love for his people, his promise to deliver them from evil, his judgment against sin, and his exposure of the false gods of Egypt. 
You see, theirs was a polytheistic religion. They created and worshiped over 80 gods. Yahweh would prove himself to be the one true God. Plague one, water turned to blood. The Lord spoke to Moses. Pharaoh's heart is unyielding. He refuses to let the people go. Go to Pharaoh in the morning. Confront him on the bank of the Nile. Take in your hand the staff that was changed into a snake and say to him, the Lord, the God of the Hebrews, has sent me to say to you, let my people go so that they may worship me. But until now, you've not listened. This is what the Lord says. By this you will know that I am the Lord. With the staff that is in my hand, I will strike the water of the Nile, and it will be changed into blood. The fish in the Nile will die, the river will smell, the Egyptians will not be able to drink its water. And Knum, he was the guardian of the Nile, God would expose him as a false god. The Lord said to Moses, Tell Aaron, take your staff and stretch out your hand over the waters of Egypt, over the streams and canals, over the ponds and the reservoirs, and they will turn to blood. Blood will be everywhere in Egypt, even in vessels of wood and stone. So Moses and Aaron did just as the Lord had commanded. He raised his staff, he struck the water of the Nile, and all the water was changed to blood. The fish in the Nile died. The river smelled so bad that the Egyptians could not drink the water. Blood was everywhere in Egypt. But the Egyptian magicians did the same things by their secret arts, and Pharaoh's heart became hard. He would not listen to Moses and Aaron, just as the Lord had said. Instead, he turned and went into his palace and did not even take this to heart. But God was just beginning his unfolding judgments against them. Plague two, frogs. The Lord said to Moses, go to Pharaoh and say to him, this is what the Lord says, let my people go so that they may worship me. If you refuse to let them go, I will send a plague of frogs on your whole country. The Nile will teem with frogs. They will come up into your palace, into your bedroom, onto your bed, into the houses of your officials and your people, into your ovens and kneading troughs. The frogs will come up on you and all your people. And so the Lord said to Moses, tell Aaron, stretch out your hand with your staff over the streams and canals and ponds and make frogs come up on the land of Egypt. So Aaron stretched out his hand over the waters of Egypt, and the frogs came and covered the land. Pharaoh summoned Moses and Aaron and said, Pray to the Lord to take the frogs away from me and my people, and I will let your people go to offer sacrifices to the Lord. So after Moses left Pharaoh, he cried out to the Lord, and the Lord did what Moses asked. The frogs died in the houses, in the courtyards, and in the fields. They were piled into heaps, and the land reeked of them. But when Pharaoh saw that there was relief, he hardened his heart, and he would not listen to Moses and Aaron, just as the Lord had said. Plague three, gnats. The Lord said to Moses, Tell Aaron, stretch out your staff and strike the dust of the ground. Throughout the land of Egypt, the dust will become gnats. And when Aaron stretched out his hand with his staff, all the dust throughout the land of Egypt became gnats and came upon the people and animals. But the, when the magicians tried by their secret arts, they could not. They hoped for Seth, the earth god, to protect them. They said to Pharaoh, this is the finger of God. But Pharaoh's heart was hard, and he would not listen. Plague four, 
flies. The Lord said to Moses, Get up early in the morning and confront Pharaoh as he goes to the river and say to him, This is what the Lord says, Let my people go so that they may worship me. If you do not let my people go, I will send swarms of flies on you and your officials and on your people and into your houses. The houses of the Egyptians will be full of flies and none of your gods will be able to stop them. But on that day, I will deal differently with the land of Goshen where my people live. No swarms of flies will be there so that you will know that I, the Lord, am in this land. And the Lord did this. Dense swarms of flies poured into Egypt. The land was ruined by the flies. Then Aaron, or Pharaoh summoned Moses and Aaron and said, Go, sacrifice to the Lord here in the land. But Moses said, Well, that would not be right. The sacrifices that we offer the Lord our God would be detestable to the Egyptians. And if we offer sacrifices that are detestable in their eyes, will they not stone us? And Pharaoh said, I will let you go and offer sacrifices to the Lord your God in the wilderness, but you must not go far. Now, pray for me. Moses answered, As soon as I leave, I will pray to the Lord, and tomorrow the flies will leave Pharaoh and his people. Only let Pharaoh be sure that he does not act deceitfully again by letting the people go no longer to offer sacrifices to the Lord. Then Moses left Pharaoh and prayed to the Lord, and the Lord did what Moses asked. The flies left Pharaoh and his officials and his people. But again, Pharaoh hardened his heart and would not let the people go. Plague five, the death of the livestock. The Lord said to Moses, go to Pharaoh and say to him, let my people go so that they may worship me. If you refuse to let them go, the hand of the Lord will bring a terrible plague on the livestock in your field, on your horses, donkeys, and camels, and on all your cattle. But the Lord will make a distinction between the livestock of Israel and that of Egypt, so that no animal belonging to the Israelites will die. You see, the Egyptians worshipped Hathor, a goddess represented by a cow who was to protect the livestock. She would be exposed as a false god because the next day, all the livestock of the Egyptians died. Pharaoh investigated and found that not even one of the animals of the Israelites had died. And yet, his heart was unyielding. He would not let the people go. Plague six, boils. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, Take handfuls of soot from a furnace and have Moses toss it in the air in the presence of Pharaoh. It will become fine dust over the whole land of Egypt and festering boils will break out on people and animals. And so it happened. And none of their gods could protect them or heal them until the Lord removed them. Plague 7 Hail, the Lord said to Moses, Get up in the early in the morning, confront Her Pharaoh, and say to him, This is what the Lord, the God of the Hebrews, says, Let my people go so that they may worship me. Or this time, I will send the full force of my plagues against you so that you will know that there is no one like me in all the earth. For by now, I could have stretched out my hand and struck you and your people with a plague that would have wiped you from the earth. But I have raised you up for this very purpose, that I might show you my power and that my name might be proclaimed in all the earth. You still set yourself against my people and will not let them go. Therefore, 
at this time tomorrow, I will send the worst hailstorm that has ever fallen on Egypt from the day it was founded until now. And so when Moses stretched out his staff toward the sky, the Lord sent thunder and hail, and lightning flashed to the ground. So the Lord rained hail on the land of Egypt. It was the worst storm in all the land of Egypt since it had become a nation. Throughout Egypt, hail beat down everything growing in the fields and stripped every tree, and Newt, their sky goddess, could not protect them. But God did protect his people. The only place it did not hail was in the land of Goshen, where the Israelites were. Then Pharaoh summoned Moses and Aaron. This time I have sinned, he said to them. The Lord is in the right, and I and my people are in the wrong. Pray to the Lord, for we've had enough thunder and hail. I will let you go. You don't have to stay here any longer. Moses replied, when I have gone out of the city, I will spread my hands and in prayer to the Lord, the thunder will stop. There will be no more hail so that you may know that the earth is the Lord's. But I know that you and your officials still do not fear the Lord God. Plague eight, locusts. The Lord said to Moses, go to Pharaoh, for I have hardened his heart so that I may perform these signs of mine among them, that you may tell your children and grandchildren how I dealt harshly with the Egyptians and how I performed my signs among them, and so that you may know that I am the Lord. So Moses and Aaron went to Pharaoh and said to him, This is what the Lord, the God of the Hebrews, says. How long will you refuse to humble yourself before me? Let my people go so that they may worship me. If you refuse, I will bring locusts into your country tomorrow. They will devour what little you have left after the hail, and none of your gods will be able to protect you. Then Moses turned and left Pharaoh. Pharaoh's officials said to him, How long will this man be a snare to us? Let the people go, so they may worship the Lord their God. Do you not realize that Egypt is ruined? Then Moses and Aaron were brought back to Pharaoh. Go and worship the Lord your God, he said. But tell me, who will be going? Moses answered, We will all go, with our young and our old, with our sons and daughters. And Pharaoh said, No, have only the men go and worship the Lord. Then Moses and Aaron were driven out of Pharaoh's presence. So the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over Egypt, so that the locusts swarm over the land and devour everything growing in the fields, everything left by the hail. So Moses stretched his staff over Egypt, and the Lord made an east wind blow across the land. By morning, the wind had brought in locusts. They invaded all of Egypt. They covered all the ground until it was black. They devoured all that was left after the hail, everything growing in the fields and the fruit of the trees. Pharaoh quickly summoned Moses and Aaron and said, I have sinned against the Lord your God and against you. Now forgive my sin once more and pray to the Lord your God to take this deadly plague away from us. Moses left Pharaoh and prayed to the Lord. And the Lord changed the wind to a very strong west wind, which carried the locust out into the Red Sea. And not a locust was left anywhere in Egypt. But the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart, and he would not let the Israelites go. Plague 9, darkness. The Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sky so that darkness spreads over Egypt, darkness that can be felt. So Moses stretched out his hand toward the sky so that darkness spreads over Egypt, darkness 
for three days. And Amun, their sun god, could not break through the darkness. No one could see anything or move about for three days. Yet, all the Israelites had light in the places where they lived. Then Pharaoh summoned Moses and said, Go, worship the Lord. Even your women and men and children may go with you. Only leave the flocks and herds behind. But Moses said, You must allow us to have sacrifices and burnt offerings to present to the Lord our God. Our livestock, too, must go with us. Not a hoof is to be left behind. But the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart. He was not willing to let them go. Pharaoh said to Moses, Get out of my sight. Make sure that you do not appear before me again. The day you see my face, you will die. Just as you say, Moses replied, I will never appear before you again. Plague 10, the death of the firstborn sons. Pharaoh was considered a god. He was the chief priest of their religion, their protector and leader, but the Lord would expose even him as a false god, powerless against the one true God. Now the Lord said to Moses, I will bring one more plague on Pharaoh and on Egypt, and after that, he will let you go from here. So Moses spoke to the people of God, This is what the Lord says, About midnight I will go throughout Egypt. Every firstborn son in Egypt will die. From the firstborn son of Pharaoh, who sits on the throne, to the firstborn son of the female slave, and all the firstborn of the cattle as well. And Isis, their goddess of life, could not stop God or his judgments. There will be loud wailing throughout Egypt, worse than there has ever been or ever will be. Then you will know that I, the Lord, make a distinction between Egypt and Israel. Then Moses summoned all the elders of Israel and said to them, Go at once and select the animals for your families and slaughter the Passover lamb. Take a bunch of hyssop, dip it into the blood in the basin, and put some of the blood on the top and on both sides of the door frame. None of you shall go out of the door of your house until morning. When the Lord goes through the land to strike down the Egyptians, he will see the blood on the top and sides of the door frame and will pass over that doorway. He will not permit the destroyer to enter your houses and strike you down. The Israelites did just what the Lord commanded Moses and Aaron. At midnight, the Lord struck down all the firstborn in Egypt. From the firstborn of Pharaoh, who sat on the throne, to the firstborn of the prisoner, who was in the dungeon, and the firstborn of the livestock as well. Pharaoh and all his officials and all the Egyptians got up during the night, and there was loud wailing in Egypt, for there was not a house without someone dead. Finally, it was time. During the night, Pharaoh summoned Moses and Aaron and said, Leave my people, you and the Israelites. Go, worship the Lord as you have requested. Take your flocks and herds as you have said and go. And also, bless me. And so God set his people free. They were delivered from slavery, oppression, 
and evil. He would lead them to the promised land. As for a remembrance, Moses spoke to the people, When you enter the land that the Lord will give you as he promised, observe this Passover ceremony. And when your children ask, What does this ceremony mean to you? Then tell them, It is the Passover sacrifice to the Lord, who passed over the houses of the Israelites in Egypt and spared our homes when he struck down the Egyptians. Then all the people bowed down and worshipped. And so for 1,300 years, the Jews celebrated the Passover meal as God had told them in the scriptures. And then Jesus arrives. God in flesh, living among us. Near the end of his earthly ministry, it was the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. The Passover meal had been prepared. Jesus was reclining at the table with his 12 disciples. And while they were eating, Jesus took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body. Though they didn't fully understand what he meant, they knew Jesus was changing the Passover. It would now have a new meaning, for it would no longer be the blood of innocent lambs, but it would be the blood of Jesus, the Lamb of God who was slain to take away the sin of the world. Jesus took the cup, saying, Drink ye all of it. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. And so no longer would they sacrifice lambs and shed their blood. They would now look to the cross of Jesus Christ, the innocent Lamb of God who shed his blood. And when that blood covers us, our sin is forgiven. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh grave, is your sting? The sting of death is sin. The power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, he gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray. And so the Lord Jesus changed the Passover meal to the Lord's Supper. And we come on August 14th of 2016 to partake of that meal, the new covenant meal the bread representing the body of Jesus and the juice representing his blood. If you are here this morning and you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you are welcome to join us at this table. For all believers here, I give you the admonition from 1 Corinthians 11. It says, whoever eats or drinks in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. Everyone ought to examine themselves first before they eat of the bread and drink of the cup. I'd like to ask you to look at me for just a moment. This is the third time I've done this. I was back there in the prayer room and I had one of those divine moments where the Spirit of the Lord came over me and I just began to burst out in weeping and brokenness and repentance, awareness of my depravity, grateful for the grace of God and what he has done in Christ. And as I just knelt at the chair there and wept and repented and I thought, Lord, you are with us today. This is very real. 
And I want to encourage you. That is for someone here this morning. If you just need a fresh touch from the Lord, he is here. We have lifted up his word. We have lifted up Jesus and the cross and the blood. And God is here to minister to us as his people, to love us and to bless us. Don't miss the blessing this morning. So I invite you to pray at this time. Soft music's going to begin. Deacons are going to come now and pass the bread. I encourage you to take these few moments that we have and pray to the Lord your God.